Good morning, children of God. Good morning. I uh, thank God for the opportunity I have to speak to us on this forum. I uh, want in a special way to thank Leah and Pastor Perez for your dedication to this forum for the sake of our young people. I, uh, I was having excuses that I took a job away from home. I live in an apartment in the city of Chicago. So I'm not able to serve. Plus, you know, the comforts of home have been taken away. But when I think of Leah's dedication, Pastor Perez's dedication, I say, thank God. If they can do it, I can do it too. I'll do my best. Uh, I thank our young people for taking the time to come on this forum to listen to the word of God. As Jesus said, man shall not only live by physical bread, but by the bread that nourishes the soul. Uh, we can uh, nourish the physical body, but if that is all we do, we are indeed uh, people to be pitied. But I thank you, Leah, and your team for providing this opportunity for our young people's souls to be nourished. And I pray that me included and others will do our best to contribute to this ministry. I was intrigued by the fact that Pastor Perez is in my village. <laughs> I, uh, by God's grace, we established a home in uh, Mukono, and it is not far away from Nakisunga, where my parents-in-law do resided for uh, many years. In fact, my wife is in Mukono right now as we speak, and uh, maybe she's aware of the preparations we're doing in that village so she may attend, I don't know. But I thank God for the miracle of Zoom and the miracle of technology that allows us to get together and uh, share God's word, encourage one another, and also support other good causes. The internet has been abused by many people, including people with evil intent. But thank God that we can find a spot where we can praise God in a forum like this. Now, I, I don't want to take too long, but I want us to pray as we start looking at God's word. Dear Lord, I thank you for bringing us together. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. May he be broadly shared in our hearts that whatever we do and say here will bring honor and glory to your name and that your people may be edified and their hearts lifted up and be brought closer to you. This is my humble prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you again for inviting me to be of service to this forum. And as I said before, I'll do my best to find time to dedicate to this forum, although my livelihood took me away from home and makes me busy all day. But I cannot stop thanking God because without him, 
I wouldn't have this livelihood either. And so this morning, allow me for a short time to bring to us a scripture as read by our sister Leah, the scripture found in Job 22, verse 21. To repeat it just for emphasis, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby, good will come to you. Now, why did I choose this scripture? I chose it because of the embedded title in it, acquaintance with God. To get acquainted with God. It's an invitation that sounds in scripture everywhere. And these words are repeated by the writer of the book of Job in chapter 22, verse 21. Now, to give a brief context of this passage in the larger context of the book. Now, this book speaks about Job, a man who was in the land of Uz. He was a wealthy man, possibly between 50 and 70 years old. He had a large family, 10 children. But there is also a special fact mentioned in chapter one, verse one, that Job was blameless and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. That's a hallmark of this character, Job. And we are told in this book that there was one time a meeting in heaven where the holy angels, God the Father, God the Son, and the angels had a meeting. And uh, we are told that Satan came as the accuser, as he's known in the scriptures, the accuser of the brethren. He appeared before God and the holy angels and said, I think some of your people, including Job, they don't fear you for nothing. It is because you protect them. It is because you provide them with prosperity. So Satan came to accuse Job together with other brethren. And it's amazing that God told Satan, in order to answer that, go ahead and test Job's character, but I don't give you permission to take his life. You know, there are so many lessons we can learn from this book. First of all, for God to be so confident to say that, I know my man, Job. He worships me for a good reason. It's not because I protect him. It's not because of the stuff I give him. He worships me from the heart. If you don't believe me, go ahead and test him. Wow, I wish I could be referred to by God like that. To be found faithful. You know, it's one thing to know ourselves. And it is another thing to be known as God knows us. But the Bible tells us that in the whole process, Job did not give up his faith in God. In spite of the losses of family, material, he says in chapter 1, verse 21, naked did I come from my mother's womb and naked shall I return? The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a faith, what a faith. Oh, I hope and pray that you and I may be a people who worship God, not because of the good times we go through, but worship him even in bad times because He is our loving shepherd. Yes, I'm just giving the context of the verse, the passage that we read, and I will soon get there. 
And we are told in the book of Job that the story could have gone well to stop right there. Job's character found to be steadfast and true and sincere. But the story goes on to say that three friends of Job came to visit him. And when they came to visit him, they were sorry for the suffering that he was going through. And to show their sorrow in verse 13 of chapter two, the Bible tells us that they sat down on the ground with Job for seven days and seven nights and said nothing. You know, this, <clears throat> this tells me a lot. Just excuse me. <clears throat> this tells me a lot about our way of comforting one another. A lot of times when we go to comfort somebody, we are tempted to give, give explanations. Uh, did I go offline? I'm sorry. No, you're on. I'm on. Okay. You know, many times when we go to visit somebody who has lost a loved one, we have the tendency to want to explain. You know, this happened because, this happened because, mm. as if we were there and we don't even give God a chance to explain himself. But these men did the right thing anyway. They came to see their friend. He was in great distress, but they just sat down and kept quiet. The verse says, because they saw that his grief was great. You know, what do you say? Even if you're past, what do you say to a man who has lost all his children? To a man who has lost all his earthly property? To a man who is sick on top of that? What do you say? I know there's a great temptation, as I said before, for pastors, fellow church members to give explanations, you know. Unfortunately, this is exactly what the friends of Job did. They started to give suggestions after seven days. And one of the suggestions they gave Job was that, you know, you are suffering because you committed a great sin. In verse five of chapter 22, is not your wickedness great and your iniquity without end? Yes, you see, this is a continuation of the Old Testament understanding that when somebody suffers, it is because of the evil he has done. You remember back there in John the ninth chapter, there was a man who was born blind. And when the disciples saw him as he came for help to Jesus, they told Jesus, who sinned? Is it this man or is it his parents that he was born blind? Yes, that's our human explanations for suffering. But it's not true because we know that Jesus told the disciples, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that you can see and experience the power of God. Yes, there are many suggestions that the friends of Job gave him. One is that you must have sinned. Another one was presented by his friend Eliphaz. And this is the verse in chapter 22, verse 21 that we read, where Eliphaz says, you know what, Job? Acquaint yourself with God, and then you will be at peace. And thereby, good or prosperity shall come to you. Yes, these words are good by themselves, the way they sound. But they have one fatal flaw. 
they were being addressed to the wrong man and for the wrong reason. Eliphaz was saying, you are suffering because you have done great wickedness. And so I am advising you, get to know who God is and you will be at peace. Not only that, there will be prosperity coming your way. You know, it's like a doctor who is a good doctor of medicine. And then he prescribes the wrong medicine to a patient because of a wrong diagnosis. Yes, but as I said, when you look at these words, they are good. They have good theology and we can use them to address our condition. <laughs> Acquaint yourself with God and be at peace and thereby you will find good or prosperity shall come to your life. What is acquaintance with God anyway? When I checked in my dictionary, in the Webster dictionary, it says to acquaint yourself with someone is to gain a personal knowledge of somebody. To gain knowledge from a first-hand basis, not to hear about, but from a first-hand basis. So, acquaintance with God. It is like being acquainted with any other person. It means getting to know, getting close to that person. It means spending time with that person. It means sharing personal issues with that time, with that person. So if I want to get acquainted to Leah, I would make sure I open up a line of communication. We talk. I hear from her. She hears from me. We exchange ideas. We spend time, maybe on the phone or any other way on the internet. But there is a, a getting close to someone. There is a spending time and there is a sharing of personal issues. So acquaintance with God is similar with acquaintance with anyone else. Acquaintance with God means we will get close to God. Acquaintance with God means we will spend time with God in his word. Acquaintance with God means we will share personal issues with God through prayer. But this kind of knowledge, this kind of personal knowledge, which the Bible speaks about, is different. It is knowledge that leads to salvation. It is knowledge that leads to transformation of character. In other words, when we get to be acquainted with God, something will happen in that relationship that we, our character will be transformed and prepared for salvation. A little mm -hmm. more. Question, is acquaintance with God possible? We don't see him. Nobody has ever seen him. But is acquaintance with somebody in Uganda possible if you live in Chicago? Yes, you can communicate via the phone. You can communicate via the internet, Facebook, FaceTime. You can write letters, although that's an art. <laughs> that is so old. Long ago, we used to write letters, emails, you know. But nowadays, we deal with email, Facebook, and other ways. So it is possible to get acquainted with someone, although you don't see him or her physically. And is it a possibility 
for man to be acquainted with God? Yes. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus spoke this word, these words, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So Jesus himself said, yes, it is possible for us to know who God is. The apostles also confirmed this. For example, 1 John 2, chapter 3 says, Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Yes, it is possible to know who God is. 1 John 2, verse 13 says, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him. Yeah? And then 2 Timothy 1.12 says, this is the Apostle Paul saying here, that for this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed to him. Is it possible to be personally acquainted with God? Yes, Jesus showed like that in scripture. The apostles said so in scripture. Now, I know my time is gone, but let's talk about the other aspect of Eliphaz's suggestion. Acquaint yourself with God. By that, you will have peace. Yes, you and I know that there is a prevalent lack of peace in the world. People here in the United States buy guns, select their target, go to a school, go to a shopping mall, and just shoot and kill 18, 20. Why? Lack of peace. There is a prevalent lack of peace in the world today. China, is trying to fight with Taiwan. Russia is fighting with Ukraine. You know, there's turmoil everywhere. There's a prevalent lack of peace today. And yet, in this generation, people are so richer than they ever been. People are so smarter than that they have ever been. But, you know, you and I know that money and smarts cannot buy peace. In fact, the problem is because man has been estranged from God. Man has separated himself from God. That is why there is a lack of peace. It's like humanity is adrift out there in the sea because no one, is acquainted with God. And so Eliphaz's suggestion comes in handy for our situation. Acquaint yourself with God through the study of his word, through prayer, through sharing issues with God. Acquaint yourself with him and you will be at peace. There is a special peace that God gives his people. It is the peace that goes to the soul, our inner being. First of all, it is peace with God. In the book of Romans, Paul speaks about chapter one, chapter eight, verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. In other words, in their hearts, they don't feel judged. When we are facing judgment, there is lack of peace. But when we surrender all to Christ Jesus, the Bible says there is no condemnation. We feel no condemnation. Otherwise, we have peace with God. The peace that Eliphaz is talking about here is peace with God. And the second aspect of this peace, it is the peace of God. 
God's peace is not merely the absence of trouble. God's peace is not merely the absence of trouble. Remember in the life of Jesus, there are many incidences where natural man would have run. Like Jesus and the disciples one time were at the beach, the Sea of Gennesaret. And they met two demon-possessed men. These men had been tied with chains. And people did not even bother to go to that beach anymore. Because these guys were demon-possessed. They took off their clothes. They shouted and they ran naked. And when the disciples reached that beach, they wanted to run. But Jesus simply stood there. As the demon-possessed man came to him, Jesus stood his ground. Instead, it is the demon-possessed man who fell down and said, Ah, don't destroy me. Don't destroy me. I know who you are. I know who you are. You know, Jesus had a special peace, the peace of God. The peace of God is not merely the absence of trouble. There was another time when Jesus met the disciples and they were at the sea. There was a big storm. They were going to sink. But Jesus was at the bottom of the ship sleeping. He was asleep. The disciples came to him and said, Master, how can you be sleeping at a time like this? He had the peace of God. The peace of God is not merely the absence of trouble. Yes, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus left these words to his disciples. Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. You know, in our present world, yes, there is lack of peace. But people have everything. People have nice automobiles. They have nice cars. For me, many times I, I sit down and I say, if I had $1 million, I think I would be peaceful. But I don't think so. You know, the peace that Jesus gives, he said, is not like what the world gives. In the world, when you have a good job, you have peace. In the world, when you have a good home, you have peace. In the world, when there is no sickness in the home, you have peace. In the world, when uh, you are being able to pay all your debts, that is peace. But Jesus said, the peace that I give is not like the world gives. Jesus' peace will outlast the troubles and the problems around us in the world. We can sit peacefully with the peace of God in our hearts, even if there is trouble all around us. I want to quickly refer to Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. This is the Lord himself saying, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. This is the kind of peace that Jesus had. This is the kind of peace that Jesus promises in John 14, 27. My peace I give to you. Jesus had perfect peace. Yes, according to the words of Heliphaz, when we get to know God, when we get a personal knowledge of God, he gives us, first of all, peace with him that we are not condemned but he also gives us that special peace that sits in our souls in spite of what is going on around us my time is quickly running out but i'm about to finish let's talk about that good which eliphaz talks about acquaint yourself with him and be at peace Thereby, good shall come to you. 
I'm sure that what Eliphaz was talking about was material blessings. Eliphaz was simply telling Job, stop sinning, get acquainted with God. All your wealth will be restored. Your children will be restored. Your health will be well. Acquaint yourself with God, thereby good or prosperity will come to you. But allow me to suggest that the good which the Bible talks about is not just material blessings. The good is more than material blessings. You remember one time uh, a lawyer came to Jesus and said, good master, what shall I do to obtain eternal life? And Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, there is no one who is good except our father in heaven. In other words, when you get acquainted with God, the good that you get, the good that comes to you is God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son coming to dwell, take residence in your heart, in my heart. In other words, God is the real good. If we have been acquainted with him, he will come with all his power, all his sufficiency, all his peace and dwell in our hearts. Jesus said so when he spoke to John in the book of Revelations that I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would let me in, I will come in and I will sup with him. I'll eat with him. I'll sit with him. The Holy Spirit will sit with him. The Father will sit with him. That is when good will come to you. Yes, that good is the Lord himself. He's the creator of the universe. He's the one who controls everything. He's the source of life. And we know that when he's present, nothing, nothing can disturb the child of God. My time is out, but I just want to encourage us today with the words of Eliphaz, Though mistakenly quoted, acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby, good will come to you. May the Lord help us to get acquainted with God through the word of God, to get acquainted with him by prayer, by exchanging our problems, our issues with him and allow him to produce that peace, that goodness in our hearts. Acquaint yourself with him and become a daughter, a son of God. Become a friend of that perfect being for whom Abraham was a friend and David was a friend. You become a member of the family of heaven when you acquaint yourself with him. Sorry to go over my time, but to finish, allow me to share this poem. This poem was written by Horatius Bonar. He was a hymn writer, and he wrote the following words, which I pray be our experience. He says, acquaint thyself with God. Know thou his tender love, so shall the healing sunshine fall upon thee from above. Acquaint yourself with God. In him alone is peace. Rest from the weariness around you, my child, and have that everlasting bliss. Acquaint yourself with God. Choose thou the better part. So shall heavenly light be shine in your heart that is like the spring light. Acquaint thyself with God. He bids thee to seek his face that your soul may become youthful, that you may test 
the goodness of grace. May the Lord bless us as we consider these words from the Holy Scriptures. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Daniel. Yes. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, you gave us the promise in your word that behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. Lord, we open up our sinful hearts and invite you to come in. We open up our lives and ask you to help us to get to know who you are, to get a personal knowledge of you through the reading of your word, through prayer, that we may be transformed into your likeness. We pray that the peace of Christ may rest in our hearts as we continue to know you. Bless your people who have gathered in this forum and others in the name of Christ, we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. That was such a timely.